In today's Paid Media Pros video, we're going to talk about adding segments to your table data. Now, I'm not talking about audience segments, that's something completely different. What table data segments are is it gives you additional rows with deeper information so you can see how your campaigns are performing. Now, I said campaigns, but it actually is more than just campaigns. You can add segment rows to a variety of different levels like ad groups, keywords, audiences, and more. So we're going to show you where you can add segment information and what options are available for table data segments. This Paid Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. I'm in one of our client accounts and you can see that I'm at the campaign level. Now you're going to find segments for your tables in a variety of different views. So if I just move over to the right, there we see segment. If I click to expand, we see a variety of options. Don't worry, we'll go through all of them. But you can find this logo on many pages within the Google Ads account. Let me show you. So besides campaigns, let's go to ad groups. There we see segment information there. There if I go to ads and assets, starting on ads, there's segment. Let's go to assets or your ad extensions. There's segment again. Let's look at videos. There's segment again. I had to click on one of them showing that it's a shorter list so not all segments are going to be available for every single view. You can look at landing pages, your keywords, your search terms within your keywords, audiences, even some other options like ad schedule and locations. So there are a variety of views where you can use segment information. So I want to stick with the campaign level view just for this video because it's going to show me the most options. So as you can see, it's highlighted on none. Every time you click on a segment, if you want to get rid of all the breakdowns, just go back to segment, choose none, and you'll go back to your standard view. But the first option we see is time. And when I click on it, it gives us a lot of subcategories that fall within here. The only one I cannot choose with my current view is day. That is because you can only view day segments if the date ranges are 16 days or less. But let's say I wanted to view campaign level metrics by week within the time that I have selected, and that is just the last month. So I'll choose week, and there we see this campaign information with the columns I have selected is broken down to include any week that has the days of last month included. And as always, you can go to your columns, modify the column information if you need to look at different metrics when you are breaking down this information. So I did just choose week, but if we actually look at the options, you can choose hour of the day, you can break it down by each individual day. Again, it's got to be a shorter date range. We're already looking at week. There's month, quarter of the year, year, and day of the week. Now, when you choose an option like hour of the day, where we're going from five segments for the week to 24 different segments, you're adding a ton of rows. And depending on how many campaigns you're trying to view on the screen at the same time, as well as how many columns that you're adding to your view, you might be pulling more information than Google wants you to. And that's purely from a quantity perspective. So depending on what view you have and how much information you're trying to view at the same time, hour of the day is a perfect example. Google might ask you to just download a report because you're pulling too much information. But this time segment breakdown could be helpful if you're trying to plan ad scheduling if you're using manual bidding, because then you can adjust your ad schedule to make bid adjustments, increasing bids by better performing times of the day, decreasing bids for certain times of the week or hour of the day that may not be performing as well, or you might just want to shut off certain times of the week in general. But the time segment can help you review this information in whichever ways make sense for your account. Everyone's account is going to be different. But the other option is click type. And what information you see here will depend on what view you have selected, what assets you may be using, what type of campaign you may be running, and a few other things. So even though I have the campaign names blurred out, both of these are search campaigns. So I can see if someone is clicking on my ad via the headline, via our call extensions, via our site link extensions, our image extensions. Let me pull up the same account, but in a different view. And this account isn't running any YouTube campaigns right now, but we still have it segmented by click type. But for video campaigns, in this case, we could see 
if they clicked on the call to action extension, sending users to our website, specific cards that you can add to your videos. We did have some URL cards added. There's the end cap. This one was a video action campaign, so we could add site links, and there's a lot of different things. For shopping campaigns, you can look at price assets, certain product feed clicks. From local campaigns, you can see if the click type was driving directions, getting location details. If you're running app campaigns, you can look at deep link clicks, install clicks, other things there, and of course, all the other ad extensions or assets like images, lead form clicks, those sort of things. And this can be helpful in a bunch of ways. Are the assets or extensions that you're attaching to your ads actually making a difference? Or does this give you more information that you need to better optimize your assets? Are all the additional engagement cards and end caps that you're adding to your video campaigns making a difference in terms of engagement or possibly conversions? If you're not seeing conversions from particular campaigns, are you at least seeing some other actions that shows you that people are actually paying attention? Are they helping in other ways to drive conversions later on? This breakdown is helpful to show you where people's eyeballs are going when they're seeing their ads. What's enticing to them that's making them click on your ad? Let me go back to the original search view. Okay, back in search, we're still on click type, but the next option we see is conversions. And I shouldn't have to say this, but of course, you need to have conversion tracking set up before you can really segment and see any of this information. If you don't, please go set up conversion tracking. But really, if you don't, you're just gonna see a bunch of blanks if you try to segment by any of the conversion segments. I'll try not to spend too much time on these because there's a lot. The first option is conversion action. There we see the segment is going to be the actual name that you called the conversion when you set it up within the conversion section. If I open this up, that lives within your tools and settings. So hopefully you've done that by now. Going back to segment again, besides conversion action, there's conversion category. When you're creating the conversion in the same conversion section I just talked about, besides naming the conversion, you do have to pick a category. So if you're lumping all of your lead forms into one, there's options for phone calls, click events, those sort of things. So if you don't care about each individual action, you just want a higher level view, there's an option. Segments again, and then for the rest of them, I'm just gonna talk about them. So conversion source, it's what you are using to measure the conversion. Is it coming from the Google tag? Are you importing it from GA4? Is it store visits? Maybe it's Firebase if you're doing app downloads, that sort of measurement. Ad event type is the action that directly precedes a conversion. The best example would be an engaged view. We have a video about engaged views. You can check that one here, but it can also be clicks, impressions, and other interactions. Next, it's conversion adjustment. That's not gonna to apply to this particular account, but it's really helpful if you have a good system to import offline information back into Google Ads. So let's say you sell something, great, it's marked as a conversion, but then that person wants to return it, and you have the ability to track those returns and import those changes within the conversions back into Google Ads. I will admit, I've never had a client that had the ability to use this, but it is an option if it works for you. Next is days to conversion. The time difference, of course, in days between the original ad impression to the conversion. It gives you a little bit more information to understand how long users are taking to convert. I don't want this to be confused with confirming an entire sales cycle. And I'm saying this because Michelle and I do a ton of lead gen. This is just the initial conversion touch point, not necessarily driving them all the way down to a closed deal. But it gives us a good impression, at least from the lead gen side, of what does it take to potentially get to that first touch point, that first visible impression interaction, to becoming an MQL. And there we see days to conversion or adjustment. It's essentially combining these two before together. So not going to talk about that one too much. Then there's new versus returning customers. Now within the campaign level conversion goal setup, there's a new additional setting to try to focus on new customer acquisition. You have to have that enabled, I believe, to start seeing some of this information. Michelle talks about the new customer acquisition goal in this video. And then there we see value rule adjustment. When you are creating conversions, again, back up in that conversion section, you can assign a particular value to your conversion action if you're not automatically importing that information. But at any time, you can go back into your conversion settings and change the value of each of those conversions. So any changes within that time will be shown here if you want to segment by that data. That was a lot, but let's go to the next one, which will be device. Pretty straightforward. Segment your information by computers, mobile phones, tablets, and depending on the campaign type, 
especially YouTube, you can view TV screen information. Remember, device is a setting that you can control at the campaign level. So if you're seeing performance differences, you can go back to your campaign settings in several campaign types. Also sometimes could be depending on your bid strategy and choose to make bid adjustments by the device type or potentially exclude certain device types completely. Back to segment again, and this option I use a lot, and that is going to be network. When you're creating a brand new search campaign, the default settings are gonna have your ads show, of course, on Google search, but also Google search partners, as well as the display network. So if you've never adjusted those settings or turned anything off, you could see how your ads are performing here. And we've learned our lesson. We turn off display network all the time because then we would just create a separate display campaign. But search partners have to stay within the specific search campaign. You can't create a search partner only campaign. So we will typically start a search campaign leaving those on, view performance, and then decide later to turn them off. In this account's case, volume is really, really low. And when it does see conversions, they're usually much more affordable. But we also see that click-through rate is typically a lot lower than Google search. So if click-through rate goes down, sometimes we find out, okay, search partners this month took a dip, but Google search is just fine. And we really don't have any major concerns. YouTube campaigns can also show you a variety of networks as well especially with video action campaigns forcing you to be on the display network, you get a better understanding of where your ads are actually appearing. And then you can always go back, depending on the campaign type, adjust your network settings, or in certain cases like YouTube, where you can't turn it off, you may have to recreate a different campaign as best as possible. We've helped save clients a lot of money by reviewing the network placements. Opening this up, we see top versus other. Then there, within these segments, it's broken up in a few ways. But what Google is trying to show you is the number of times your ads appeared on the search results page. And this segment is gonna get really weird as Google starts making major changes to the ever scrolling search results page. So I'm gonna talk about what each of these mean for now, but understanding that things could change as google.com makes major changes down the road. The top position is if your ad was above the organic search results. Other, you see it's calling out search specifically, is if your ads don't appear, above the search results. If your ad ran on the display network, which you could also see this information on the network settings, search partners top, understanding that they're splitting Google search and search partners. But as you can see, it's blank. That's because Google stopped recording this back in October of 2020. You can only view this metric if you change your date range to go before October of 2020. And then just like the Google display network, showing you if your ads appeared on search partners. So another thing that you could look at with the network segment. If you're running performance max campaigns, you may wanna look at cross network because your ads are gonna be on search, potentially shopping, discovery, YouTube, display, all at the same time. But other options you may see here, depending on what campaign type you're running, would be YouTube videos, YouTube search, other ones that this particular client isn't showing up on. Going back to segment, ad destination. This one is telling you where is the user going or landing after they click on your ad. Is it a website? Are they calling you? If you have app tracking set up properly, are they landing on your app instead of the mobile website? Certain things that you could look at there. And the last option, which none of my current accounts have, would be segmenting by brand lift type. And this one is not gonna be available in every Google Ads account. You have to work with a Google rep to set up a brand lift. But brand lifts are a study that's set up where users or potential customers will answer certain survey questions, and then Google will make note if there are certain ad recall, consideration stages, purchase intent, those are actual names, and then those stages of the survey questions will show up as specific segments that you look at. Brand lift segments are only available at the campaign level view. But these are the main options that you get for segmenting your data within Google Ads. I know I gave some examples on how we use certain segments when reviewing accounts, but so many times you just have to review the information yourself. It's easy to go down a rabbit hole and over-segment your information. Make sure that the information that you're looking at is consistent over time to justify making the optimization decisions within your account, no matter what level it is. Sometimes you may have to look at several different segments to find some consistencies. Other segments, like network, which I said I use a lot, could be an easy one to find some glaring holes of what may not be working so you can go and change your settings. If you have any other questions about table segments in Google Ads, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, 
give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.